God having children and so on and so forth. The children of Israel shun that idea. Hear Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. You should have no other God besides Him. You should worship Him with all your heart, with all your mind. This is the belief, the crux of the belief. God is one. He doesn't have a father, doesn't have a mother, doesn't have children, doesn't have sons or daughters. Remember I mentioned to you the consistency of narrative. So he's repeating it just like any other Muslim would. That the very foundations of a religion, they need to be clear, not unclear. And we find even in the New Testament, we find echoes of the truth from Jesus from his own lips. John chapter 17 verse 3. Do you, have you read this verse? Because it's, it's a, such a powerful verse from the very mouth of the person who's being accused of claiming to be God. When he says, referring to the one who sent him, he says, you, this is eternal life that they should know you, the only true God, and Christ Jesus, the one you have sent. So he is excluding everything that people know about God and saying, no, the only true God is you, the Father. He's addressing him as the Father, and he's saying, I'm going to my Father and your Father. So not a special Father, he's your Father too. So this fathership and sonship is not a unique to Christ. He says, I'm going to my Father and your Father. So when he addresses this Father, and he's the son of that Father, you are exactly like that. You are the son of the Father, but you're not literally the son. This is a relationship of affection, of love. And then, the and, finishes, and then he says, I'm going to my God and your God. If somebody says, I'm going to my God, what on earth will take people to really believe that he is God? They have to really twist their mind to believe in it. Imagine I tell, I'm telling you, uh, by the way, I'm going to my God. Would you take me as God? Because God doesn't have a God. If I say to you, I'm going to my God and I have a God, then you know for sure that I am not God. I can never be God because I have a God and God doesn't have a God. So this is what the Bible says about Jesus Christ. But the church tells you otherwise because they have formulated a belief in which they have elevated Jesus because of their love, respect and honor and they don't want to come down of it. Our Prophet Muhammad said, do not elevate me like the Jews and the Christians, the people of the book earlier has done to them. Don't elevate me because, because he is a prophet and a messenger. There is a distinction between creation and the creator. The creation, whether they're prophets, can never be equal to the status of a creator, God. There's always this distinction. God is the highest, the greatest. So look what Jesus says as recorded in the Quran, because if this is the truth, then the Quran tells you what Jesus will say on the Day of Judgment. What he's going to say on the Day of Judgment against those who said that he is God. Then the Quran, God says, and remember when Allah will say on the Day of Resurrection, O Isa, Jesus, son of Mary, did you say to mankind, worship me and your mother as two gods besides Allah? He will say, glorified be you. All glory is to God alone. It was not for me to say that which I had no right to say. It wasn't for me to say that which I had no right to say. Had I said such a thing, then you surely would have known about it. You know what is in my inner self, though I do not know what is in yours. True to you, only you are the all-knower of the unseen. Then the verse continues. Never did I say to them except that which you taught me to say, which is what, what the brother just mentioned regarding Jesus from his own lips. Worship Allah, my Lord and your Lord. I go unto my father and your father, my God and your God. This is what the, Jesus is going to say on the Day of Judgment. He's going to absolve himself from those who claim that he's God. The verse continues. And I was a witness over them whilst I dwelt amongst them. But when you took me up, you were a watcher over them. And you are a witness over all things. If you punish them, they are your slaves. And if you forgive them, truly, you, only you, are the Almighty or wise. Yeah. So what the Christians have done, they've tried to find something from his narratives, his life, and say this illustrates that he must be something extra special God. The example you've given earlier, oh, on the cross, he forgave someone. You would not find anywhere in the New Testament, Jesus says, I forgive you. Rather, he says, your sins are forgiven in a past tense. When I say the door is open, who opened the door? You have no clue. 
because in my statement in a passive voice I am not telling you who the the actor is the subject is doing the opening so Jesus says if you look at the Bible translation and the Greek he says your sins are forgiven meaning by, by God he's the one who came has come down from what he's raised from God to tell people about God and his message so if God says if you do this then you'll be forgiven that's what he becomes the authority at that time think about it like this if God gives you the authority to forgive sins would that make you God of course not so even if God gave him authority to perform miracles to raise the dead with God's permission and so on and none of those actions will make him God why because you can't make someone God because God is he doesn't become God doesn't become he is so you can't give glory to God knowledge to God power to God because God has that already so if you read the Gospels God gives him the glory he gives them the power that means before it was given to him he was powerless he was glorious meaning he was not God think about that way if Jesus received this authority before he received it what was he authority less God is always with authority anyone who didn't have authority cannot be God so now that you know that Jesus could not have been God the idea this notion of original sin him coming down dying for the sins of mankind you just believe in God and go to heaven that idea is alien and it's unjust because like I mentioned right in the beginning the idea that Jesus an innocent person has to come down to die for the sins of mankind you would not accept that in any court of law in any country you would see that as unjust wouldn't you by by look it's obvious that any human being who tells you that this is how justice is you're going to say either you're mad or you're a liar the innocent does not pay for the sins of the guilty ever universal human value this justice is universally attainable and achievable anywhere in the world whether in a tribal society or in a very advanced civilized society today everyone knows the guilty is responsible for their crime and they are blameworthy and they are punishable or accountable for what they've done but the innocent are never guilty of a crime which they didn't take place for example the police cannot come you here and arrest you and say we're going to fine you 1000 pounds because that guy had a speeding ticket which you have no idea who this guy is can they say look you're guilty you have to pay the penalty because that Tom who speeded you know, 90 miles per hour on a 70 mile restrictions so you are guilty of that you will say are you crazy I had nothing to do with it <laughs> you see how I get, I, he's giving the same analogy that I gave but this analogy is obvious I mean we don't even need to tell you this so look here's, the, here's what the Quran says regarding those Christians who took Jesus as a God besides God it says most certainly they have disbelieved who say Allah is the Messiah God is the Messiah or the Messiah is God but the Messiah said O children of Israel worship Allah my Lord and your Lord truly whoever sets up partners in the worship of God God will be make paradise forbidden for them and hellfire will be their abodes wherein they shall find no helpers you won't find any helpers and then the verse continues most certainly they have disbelieved to say that Allah is a third of three meaning Trinity is a third of three but there is no God but one Ilah one God if they do not cease from what they are saying then indeed a painful torment will befall them and then the verse continues will they then not turn in repentance and beg his forgiveness for indeed God is off forgiving most merciful then the verse continues the Messiah the son of Mary was no more than a messenger just like the messengers that came before him and his mother was a righteous saintly woman and this word Siddiqa is like a, a very righteous very truthful and then God gives a very crude but powerful analogy he says and they both ate food or an example they both ate food have a look see how clearly we are establishing the signs against them have another look see how they have deviated away and then the verse continues the verses continue say O Muhammad to mankind how do you worship besides Allah something which has no power to either harm you or bring you benefit but it is Allah who is the all hearer the all knower say O Muhammad O people of the scripture meaning the Jews and the Christians do not exceed the limits 
accept for that which is the truth. And do not, and this is the most important bit, and do not follow the vain desires of people who went astray before you, who misled many, and they all went off the right, right path. The one who distorted the message of Jesus was a man who never, like I mentioned, never heard, who never met Jesus, I should say. Paul. He was walking down the road, of, the, 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 the road to Damascus. He claimed that he heard a he heard a voice and he saw a light, and that this voice and light is supposed to be Jesus. And that this Jesus said to him that you're going to go and preach the new gospel. Remember, Saint Paul was the persecutor of the Christians. So how do you how do you try and fight an idea with another idea? So after Jesus was raised up, Saint Paul came along and came up with an idea. The idea was from Greek mythology or Greek theology. The idea that God comes down in the form of a man, he dies for your sins. This is not something new to the, to the, to the Christian concept. This is something that came before that. Mithra, who came down, committed self, self-emulation, died for the sins of mankind. But these are something that the ideas came well before. So, again, we ask you, if the truth is clear and you're, you've been told that the truth is this way, then anything that's joined to that idea has to be false. If Jesus is not God, the idea that came with that is false. It goes back to that, look guys, you're going to, you're going to stand before your Lord. I know you, you need to go, yeah? We're just two minutes. You're going to stand before your Lord. You're not going to be questioned on his behalf and you're not going to be questioned on his behalf. behalf. Everyone, we've been told by the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu will be facing his Lord alone without any interpreter in between. On the Day of Judgment, God is going to come to you and then he's going to give to you a book, the real book of deeds. And in those, you're going to open up the book and nothing will be left out. You're going to read it and the ones who have eternal regrets, they're going to say, woe unto me. A book that leaves out nothing? A book that leaves out nothing. As for the ones who are righteous, they're going to receive it in their right hand. So guys, think about this. Before you leave, you guys are how old are you now? 20, 30? 32. 32. So guys, 32. Some of our friends have passed some of our friends have passed away. It's not a joke. This life is not a joke. This life is a life of tests. In the hereafter is the life of bliss. Not this life. So don't take things for granted. Talk to each other. Be sincere. Remember, God is the one. If you call upon Him, astajiblakum. God will call. He will answer your call. He will answer your call. He's the one that is all hearing, all seeing. But if you don't have any doubts now, take a shahada, become a Muslim, and then we'll teach you how to, you know, we'll get you in contact in Switzerland. Switzerland was it? Uh, Finland? Switzerland. We'll get you in contact with people who might who, who will be out there. Go to your mosque. Become a Muslim. Worship your Lord like Jesus worshipped his Lord, fell on his face, pray to God in the Garden of Gethsemane, just like we Muslims pray. I'm not sure how much more I can give you guys, but yeah. No, thank you very much. I just would like to reflect on it. No I mean, thank you for your time. Thank no you for the information. No what about your older brother? Huh? What about your older brother? Is your older brother ready to become a Muslim? <laughs> no, older older brother. Brother. Oh, you're the older, <laughs> the older brother. brother. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Do you, reflect, do you have copies of the Quran? I can, I can uh, get it. Which uh, translation English. do you use? It's English. Use as many as possible because once you're trying to understand something and it's not making sense or something, get another translation. In English, there's more than 50 translations. So obviously, I'm not going to ask you to read all 50. Academic translations are okay, good. Some academic translations. The one that you have? I think there's some Sahih translation. As I said, always read with a few. Because no, a translation I mean, I, I is never. One, I bought one from Mustafa Khattab. Mustafa it's, Khattab is okay. It's, it's, good. it's good. It's good. It's good. It's okay. okay Carry yeah. on reading that. It will at least give you the essential message in there. But of course, the Arabic is the original, and that has more nuances of what it means. But with any translation, you still get the core message of what Islam is all about. So don't delay. Die in a state of Islam, where you have committed yourself to show this love and. Uh, gratitude to God rather than saying I'm busy I'm, I'm, I don't have time I have to do something else because we we have to profess it the key to paradise God said is to state that statement that you God 
There is no God worthy of worship except you and Muhammad is your messenger, your servant. This is the key to paradise. If we don't say it, we have no key. You might believe in it. Many other things. Satan believes God exists. Satan believes God is one. What's missing? His obedience. His commitments, his compliance. So for you, it's the affirmation in the heart, first of all, declaration in the tongue, and the next step is showing that commitment. So what are you waiting for is the question. Go and reflect. It's not difficult to become a Muslim. That statement enters you in the fold of Islam. Then it makes you obliged to show that commitment, to do that actions of commitment. Because otherwise now, when Ramadan comes, you are not going to fast even though you know God commanded it. Because you said, I haven't become a Muslim yet, why am I going to fast? But once you make that declaration to God, you will show the commitment to God. Yes, God, you asked me to fast, I will fast for your sake. That's the difference that makes. And it gives you that key to paradise. There's a way of things, and this is what we have to follow. Guys, we, we ask Allah to guide you. We ask the one above, we ask him to guide you to the truth. Be sincere. Here's a present from us to you. Have a safe journey on the way home. Nice one, guys. Take care once again. All the best, okay? Take care, yeah. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.